good morning you guys back with another read hopefully this message finds everybody in good health and in good spirits um it's december 22nd friday almost about almost eight o'clock in the morning so um i've already um pulled some tarot but i had I already had this feeling that this uh where it started yesterday of this like um being impatient or how you say it um kind of impatient short tempered and it just you know came on like I don't know where all of a sudden like I started feeling agitated short tempered like impatient and anybody that knows me knows I'm a very patient person, um, probably too patient. But um, I was picking up on that energy. And so this morning is something else. And it may be um, piggybacking off of that energy from yesterday. But uh, what I have out here now is the lover, temperance, and four cups. So, um, that's a passionate new beginning out here for someone. Um, it could be you. Um, but there's, you know, there's balance. You're in alignment with whatever it is, whatever this is, whatever you're looking toward, but you're not accepting any offers at this moment, but, you know, you're keeping your options open. Um, but I wanted to get some to clarify the lovers and um, apparently it's, it's just it's going to have some the divine has got some delays and it's, and it's just you know with the divine right now um, there's some things you're going to have to let go of and it you know walk away from and some people may their feelings may be hurt um and you may go through some turbulence with that but when you can let go of that and walk away from that you know the that new beginning is there um the four of cups it's the seven of swords and uh six of wands So it's um, yeah, you could be accepted. You know, not accepted being offers right now. Just you know, looking at what you have going on and just trying to, you know, look at your options as far as what you need and you know what is going to benefit you. And thinking about yourself at this moment and you know it could be you know some burdens on on you or whatever it is that you're dealing with or struggling with or you know financially or whatever the case may be that may you know have you you know just turning down offers right now you might just be working on yourself some things um, personally you're working on financially emotionally but I do see a victory you know, in that, you do have a victory. Um, so, um, this is a general read. So, gender is fluid. So, you know, flip the roles as you need to. Um, he could be a she, she could be a he. So, but I'm, I'm getting a, a feminine energy. It could be masculine. Could be a feminine and a masculine energy, but um, yeah, you do. You have a passionate new beginning out here. Uh, it's just gonna take some. You know, you're gonna have some delays in that department. Just considering the fact you're gonna have to let go of some things, clear some things out. Um, we're having a new moon, I think December 26th, so, um, you know, that'll be the time to let, you know, go release those things that no longer serve you, 
you know, your higher good, your higher self. So, um, you don't want blockages and things, you know, creating stagnation, you know, in your process. Because it can have you in your head about what to do, what direction to go in. And right now, you're, you know, in alignment. So, that's good. You know, that means you're, you're doing the healing. And, um... Learning how to balance, you know, your light and dark, you know, so that way you can stay on top of what decisions you do have to make and uh, make them in a timely fashion. But you do have a victory. Um, and those offers, you know, just be mindful of what they consist of to make sure they, they serve your higher good, you know. Oh, especially when it comes to contracts and business, you know, you want to make sure that whatever is serving, whatever the contract is or whatever the opportunity is, it serves you as well as the other person. Um, especially when you both, you know, should have something to lose in the situation. You know, if it doesn't work out and if it does, you don't want something... Uh, you know, to sign yourself up for something that somebody else is going to be more beneficial in that opportunity than you. And then before you know and you look up, you know, you're counted out just by default, you know, just by the fact that you didn't read the fine print or you didn't read in between the lines. So, uh, but you do have a victory, you know, when um, it comes to making those decisions. You know, I do feel like you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to make the right decision and go in the right direction, you know, considering you still stay, you know, in alignment with things. And, you know, when all else fails, pray, you know. Ask the Most High God, you know, for clarity, for a sign, and be mindful of that sign. And he'll definitely send it to you, you know, but be specific about what it is you want from him. Um, and sometimes those blockages can be people, you know, that can cause delays, um, can be things that they may be, um, in question about, they may be, you know, just, uh, um, individuals just involving themselves you know in your decision making it kind of making everything complicated so you have to take you know your own uh, credibility for what it is regardless of what somebody's saying to you you know and picking it up too so no matter who can be in your ear and your head about a decision you get the final say you know and next to you is god you know that is signing off on whatever that is and if he feels you know, you don't, sometimes, you know, God will let you go along, you know, but let that decision be for you to learn a lesson, for you to see, you know, how that's going to work out. And then if you decide to come to him and let your faith lie in him, you know, to guide you, then that's what that'll be. But you have to be ready to surrender that situation or the answer to that question to him. Um, or more or less, you know, Mother Earth, you know, universe or whatever. Because like I said in uh, a couple of my readings um, prior to this one, what you put out in the universe is what you get back, you know. So if you put healthy, selfless, you know, um, choices out there, decisions out there, then you'll get that response back, you know. If you put, you know... Um, positive thinking and outcomes and interactions with people, then you'll get, you know, positive outcome and healthy reactions, you know, and you will have those people on your path that needs to be there, that genuinely needs to be there. So make sure you always ask for, you know, genuine people to be on your path, but you have to be genuine too. You know, it doesn't, it goes both ways. So. Um, you can't ask the universe for something you're not willing to be or have, haven't worked on being and ain't putting out. 
So if you ain't putting out that kind of energy, don't expect that kind of energy. If you looking for a victory in something, you know, and you having to make choices and it's, you know, causing you to have to eliminate some people, you need to be unapologetic about it, you know, because they're going to be upset with something. If not that situation, it's going to be something down the road anyway. So um, what I'm getting out of that is just being a people pleaser. You know, you can't let every decision you make, if any of the decisions you make, be something that you worried about what other people are going to say or what they're going to think about you because you made that decision. Whatever it is they think about you, they thought it already. It was before that decision or that situation even occurred. But that's that's just saying that you're in line with the genuine people you need to be around. So eliminating some people to get to the genuine people is necessary. You know, it's definitely necessary. And that's not saying you being mean. It's just saying you're trying to keep your path clear. You're just trying to keep your path, you know, clear clutter. And as long as everybody stay in the lane that that's designed for them, it's less traffic. Period. So, but let's see, you know, what the energies have to say or what the messages is to any one particular person. So, you know what fits in your story and in your lane, what belongs in, you know, in your situation. So, let's see what we got. winter is the first card that came out so something may be happening in the winter time could be uh, a love opportunity offering in that area next card out is I rejected my love for you because of my family so somebody um actually turned down an offer because of what their family felt or what their family had to say. So you or someone here um, has been rejected, that your offer was rejected or they rejected you in love, you know, as far as their love being something that they gave openly, um, just long term wise it's you know they want you to know they rejected they rejected showing you you know just how much they loved you because of their family so the next card out is stay away from hybrid foods so that's just uh you know, some things, some fruits and vegetables can be cross-pollinated, just like people. So, I mean, just like you have mixed race, you know, people, you have um, the same thing going on with food, which is another word uh, for hybrid. But um, that's just the fact of people planting things um, where something existed before, but they haven't dug up all the roots to it. And they plant something else. So that vegetable, that fruit may take on the look of one, you know, the actual fruit that you're planting or the actual vegetable that you're planting, but it has a different taste or a different um, texture or color or something like that uh, because of what was there before. So that also means um, you got some things that's generated in the lab, you know, that's hybrid. And in today's time, you know, I use one thing I picked up on, for example, was ginger root. And some people, I don't know if they're lab generating it or whatever, or like um, 
you got people that grow certain fruits and vegetables at a rapid pace for whatever purpose that is, whether it's to, you know, for profit, but it's definitely not a healthy way to do things. And the ginger root I got, it was actually a lot lighter in color than the actual ginger root I've normally used to getting. So, and then it, it, it didn't have that rugged, uh, how do you say it? It's already a real funny made structure type herb or however you want to say it. Um, it's already funny looking, you know, if you've ever seen it in the produce section. Um, and this particular ginger that I got, it was kind of, it was less funny looking. And it was a lot, lot lighter in color. Um, and the thing with that is you want to make sure the fruits and vegetables that you are eating aren't hybrid. Because you don't get the same nutrients at all from a hybrid fruit. Now, something that's homegrown that you fertilize and, and nurture yourself, you know, has that, um, it has that nutrient and that substance that you need to get those nutrients that your body needs from that particular fruit and vegetable, whatever it is you're growing. But when it's hybrid, you, you're not getting that at all. Like, and so if you're experiencing whatever you're taking at eating or using that hybrid fruit or vegetable for, if it's not, you're not getting the effects that you should get and stuff, um, it's mainly because of that. It's, it's not, it doesn't have the, the nutrients in it that it should. It just appears to be the fruit or the vegetable that you normally would buy. And it also doesn't last very long at all. Like, a hybrid fruit doesn't last long at all. Like, if you leave it out, if it's sitting in a store for two or three days and it's fine, it should be like that at your home. But sometimes that vegetable, it starts to wither away the minute you walk out the store with it for some reason. But it's, you know, telltale signs. Like, if you get something from a fruit stand that's homegrown and you buy a piece of, of that same fruit from uh, a market like Ralph's or Publix or Walmart, for that matter, that seems to have a lot of hybrid fruits at this point. Um, and you put the two out and you, you can see, you can tell the difference. So let's get the next card. Next card out is playing victim to gain sympathy. So some people, um, somebody out here is doing that. Like they, you know, claiming victim to something that they, you know, want to get the right response from, they want to get the right attention from, you know, their situation or, um, most of the time when people play victim, it's because they want a certain response. They want something that, they don't want the criticism that comes with, you know, them possibly being wrong in a situation. And that's what I'm getting here. It's, it's uh, somebody's playing victim to something that, they've inflicted on somebody else or called somebody else or don't want to take accountability for something they've done towards somebody that caused um, some heartache or some some type of financial situation or you know they didn't they've done something that they've done something intentionally to cause a, a situation or a delay here. And now they're playing victim. Like, you know, it's something somebody did to them that made them do this or behave this way. And, you know, pointing out whatever this person's reaction was to whatever it was. So what I'm getting is somebody... Somebody's guilty of uh, intentionally causing a situation to occur or got some animosity towards somebody or something. And they either doing something behind the scenes to manipulate that person or the situation or something that 
has involved this person. And they now they playing victim. You know, it's like, oh, I didn't do this. They, they saying I did this because they probably did this to me. Or they saying, you know, this is like that because they probably done um, did this to somebody. Or they feeling guilty about something, but it's actually something they actually have done. And or had a part in, and they don't want to take accountability. So instead of taking accountability, they just playing victim. You know, if this is something somebody is making it look like they the bad guy, and they really hadn't liked that. I'm not like this. I wouldn't do that. Why would I do that? I don't know them. You know, I don't even know them like that. This that type of thing. That's what I'm getting. But they actually are that that person. They, they don't need a reason to do whatever it is they're guilty of. They just did it because they felt like when that time came, if they was found out or if it came up, they was already going to play victim anyway. So that's what I'm getting. Next card out is I learned so much from you. So somebody wants you to know they've learned a lot from you. They've learned so much from you. And that takes a lot for some people to say, you know, to be honest, because some people don't want to admit that they learned it from somebody else. And in and, and in some situations, especially, you know, when you're looking for a new beginning or you're looking toward that, you want to be with somebody that you can learn from, you know, both ways. You learn from them, they learn it from you. Because it's meant to compliment each other, you know. Some things your partner may be a lot, you know, stronger at doing and being or handling. And some things, you know, may be more in your line of expertise or, you know, you may have more patience for something like that than the other person. Um, you know, when it comes to making a sound decision, but... And somebody out here with some fake love. So hopefully, uh, you know, somebody's not out here dishing out fake love. Of course, some people like that better than the real thing. And that can cause a lot of confusion and have you, you know, with some delays in love, you know, too, if you out here dealing with somebody that don't really love you for real anyway. And I'm picking that up, too, is somebody's you know, in a situation that they playing victim in the situation, but they out also out here dishing out a lot of fake love, too. So maybe that's to get something done. Maybe that's to get something to go their way. Or, But either way, you know, fake love is, is more acceptable now, and it's going on a lot, you know, longer now than I even care to say because, some folks, if you ain't got fake love, some folks think you out here just playing game, and they not for sure about you because they've been getting so much fake love. They don't when real love come around, they feel like you insecure because of the things you, you know, uh, putting out or putting down, you know, or whatever it is you your concerns is with them. They feel like oh man, yeah, you got trust issues, you got this and you got that. When normally a lot of them just used to fake love, so. When it comes to fake love, it come you know, it don't even have too many um, red flags right away for some people. Because either you not looking at things the way they, you know, seeing things clearly and you allow fake love to come in and there you go. You know, nobody can tell you nothing different because in, in your eyes, you know, the way you seeing things is, is love. You know, it's real. But it's actually fake, especially when you're not sure of what you involved in or sure of the person or you're not really finding nothing about them to question. Because sometimes you get them, you give somebody like a, a cheat sheet and you tell them some of the things you're looking for, or, you know, some of the things you're trying to avoid or what's keeping you from making, taking somebody seriously. They, and they conform to that person. It's like they're a transformer. And so they end up 
dishing out what they feel like you said you looking for, what it is you say you ain't into. Now they become, you know, they want to do what it is you are into. Whatever it is, they, they the opposite. They want to be that person. And there you go, the fake love start to, you know, set in. And before you know it, you know, they want you to notice what it is they putting out that you saying that you, you know, look leaning toward or trying to go toward. And they want to make sure you see this in them. And then you got the fake love that, that come in right behind it. So, yeah, I mean, I've been picking it up too. The next card is something that's a joke out here. I got a joke by, so somebody wants you to know this. This is a joke. Bye. Um, winner is out here. So you could be a winner in the situation, you know, when it comes to whatever it is you got going on. And just know, cause also in in the in the in the uh, tarot you do got um, the six of wands out here, which is victory. And it is a victory, so you know you're definitely gonna be a winner in in whatever this situation is, or whatever it is you're working on or going towards, you know. You definitely consider the winner. You're gonna be a winner. First, uh, middle, or last initial G. And hidden agenda. So somebody got a hidden agenda out here. Maybe it's you or a cross watcher or whatever. But somebody got a hidden agenda out here. And that hidden agenda is gonna get you nowhere. So I don't know what that's about. Or people feel like they need to uh, have a hidden agenda out here because most of the time it's going to cause you to be in a situation where you're going to have to uh, backtrack at some point in time when they figure it out or when they pick up on it. Especially if you don't um, plan on seeing that person again or having no involvement with them. But if you don't have a hidden agenda about something, Make sure that person ain't uh, intuitive or trusting, you know, their own instincts and stuff and going, you know, using their discernment. Because when people use their discernment and they intuitive and they putting, they thinking as you talking, that hidden agenda ain't going to work. I'm going to tell you that now. So be mindful of those out here with hidden agendas because sometimes just you paying attention and, and and asking questions or throw the whole situation off, throw the whole they whole mindset off because they wouldn't bank it on you asking that question or that response or that environment to be the way it was or your energy to be the way it was. But uh, somebody out here with a hidden agenda. And it could be somebody out here giving out fake love and, you know, um, playing victim out here. But they definitely, somebody definitely out here got a hidden agenda. So be mindful of that. You know, if you, you know, um, feel as though whatever it is you're dealing with or whoever you dealing, whoever you dealing with may have that, you know, ask questions. Next card out is be your authentic, be your authentic best self. So I always, um, you know, say for myself, um, being, just being yourself means accepting yourself. You know what I'm saying? Being your authentic self means accepting and loving everything about yourself, even the flaws, even if somebody else pointing them out as flaws. It's, it's, it's you. When you know you, when you know what you're capable of, when you know how you can be from day to day, nobody else is going to love you unconditionally, and authentically like you do yourself so you know be your authentic best self because when you that you know you most comfortable you can give the best responses you can think clearly without having to be apologetic about or embarrassed or ashamed about what your response may be or shy to respond but when you being somebody else and you're not 
you know, accepting who you are, how you are, and what you can be like from day to day, no matter who you're dealing with, or by whether you by yourself. You know, you know you better than anybody. So whether it's weird to somebody else that you like this, at least you're being authentic. You're not, you know, trying to be something that they comfortable with, or you're not trying to be something that they show off, or you're not trying to be something that, you know, they pay attention to or feel like they want to show you off to or that you know they feel like you enough you know be your authentic best self be your authentic best self nobody else can be your authentic best self but you i don't care how many copycat doppelgangers or whatever they all got their own way of how they want to represent themselves and what they think of themselves and if somebody asks them what they think of them themselves and you not there and they don't know what you think of yours it, it, it's just it's fake like this fake love that's out here so you can tell when somebody not being their authentic self and they trying to be somebody else copycat somebody else you know this and this swap with somebody else when it come down to you being who you are it's just you not liking who you are and you'll lose yourself in somebody else and next thing you know you feel like well i can uh, I am that person. They just ain't who they know. You know, that's going to really stress you out. That's really going to have you out here playing victim because you was out here doing something you knew didn't make no sense. With You know, it was going to make you look weak and it was going to make you look small in the first place. So, next message out is unsent text messages. So, somebody out here got some unsent text messages. Maybe you're not sending them because you're not sure what the response will be. Maybe you blocked. Or maybe, you know, um, you're unsure of what the text message is. You know, as far as what the response might be. You know, you may feel like you're not going to be a winner at it, but you never know. You never know. You know, and maybe them unsent text messages could be, you know, centered around a hidden agenda. So maybe that's, you know, why these messages hadn't been sent. Only you know that. Or whoever this is for. There's some unsent text messages out here. First, middle, and last initial L. First, middle, last initial N. First, middle, last initial M. First, middle, last initial D. They card out, spread, spread it lies and gossip on you. So somebody out here spreading lies and gossip on you. For whatever reason that, whatever, whoever gets out of that. It, like I said, whatever you put out in the atmosphere, you bound to get it back. Because that's how it is. It, it always recycles. It, it gets, it gets recycled. It gets reciprocated. It gets sent back out. So. If you spreading lies and gossip out here, you know, on somebody, or this is you, I mean, uh, or somebody doing it to you, they gonna get it back. I'm telling you, like some folks now, half of the people they spreading lies and gossip to, they spreading lies. Them same people spreading lies and gossip about them. The minute they walk off, the minute they, you know, talking to somebody, they know don't know this group of people. They lying and gossiping on these same people. They've been lying and gossiping with. Those same people is lying and gossiping, you know, on you. And the tables don't even have to turn. They don't talk about you. You sitting around with a group of folks talking about people and gossiping and you knowing half the stuff these folks putting out here, you ain't did, you ain't looked it up. You ain't even asked the person they talking about. So you know it's gossip. You know it's lies. Because it, why wouldn't you ask the person? Why wouldn't y'all talk about this with that person? You know, why I got to be gossip? Why I got to be lies? Why, why does it need to be that? And most people go looking for the lies and gossip anyway. Especially if the lies and gossip is about somebody that they know they got a number to. If you got that person's phone number, why are you asking anybody else about, you know, whatever it is? Or why are you talking about somebody else, you know, that you got a phone number to? That you can tell them, you can ask them, you can run that by them, whatever it is you talking about. That way you won't have to, you know, sit around 
telling lies and gossiping. But some folks know the truth about whoever these people is that they're lying and gossiping about. They know the truth. And half of them don't. Some of them just be out here lying and gossiping and trying to get the truth by telling lies and gossiping. Because they don't be knowing. Um, let me give you a situation um, when it comes, you know, to how I move. If somebody's sitting around lying and gossiping or they bringing up somebody they, and I'm knowing I'd be around this person, I I roll with them, you know. I kick it with them. They, you know, they my round. And they bringing up something about this person and I'm knowing they know I know this person. I'm immediately going be ready to squash that. I don't even want to talk about that. Let's talk about something else. And if anybody got some rebuttal about that, it's the fact is we can call that person now and put them on speaker and y'all can say all that now and let them see what they got to say. Let's see what they got to say. Otherwise, let's stop talking about these folks because I know this person. You know I know this person. I got their number, but you're not going to sit around me and talk about this person and not know the fact because this person deserves the, the ability to be able to, res, to defend themselves. And when people sit around lying and gossiping on you, they don't want you to have that control. They don't want you to have that that insight. They don't want you to have that input. They want to be able to sit around and say what they're saying and whoever listening, you know, to take out of it what they want and let them run off with whatever they feel like these people saying is the truth when it's actually a lie. They don't want to bring this up to these people. They don't want to even ask these folks who they're talking about what's going on with them because that just makes people realize you nosy, you care more about them than you saying you do, but you're talking about them. So, yeah. If somebody wants to win at all costs out here, probably these same people out here spreading lies and gossip want to win at all costs. And next card out is I respect how you I respect how you don't settle. So somebody respects how you don't settle. You know, maybe you somebody that um maybe you you know somebody that don't just uh go for anything and allow anything to go on when it comes to you or accept something when it comes to you. You know, if it affects you in some type of way, you're not gonna just settle with that. You know, if something somebody said, Well, that's just how I, you know, that's just how it is, maybe. You may feel like, well, no, that ain't got to be like that. That's that. I think that's like that because that person wants that like that or this situation don't have to be that way. You know, so people not settling for something. I remember somebody saying, well, you know, um, not every man, you know, men out here, they going to be with somebody else. That's just giving. Like, ain't no man going to be with just no one woman. And I feel like that's a man that's settling. That's a man that want me to settle for what he said. Because I know, hands down, there's some men out here that'll be with just one woman. Because there are some men out here that don't want a woman that's going to be with everybody and anybody can get with. They easily able to be, they easily settling with something. And I just didn't take what he said to be true. I wasn't going to settle for that. I'm not going to settle for thinking that, you know, that anybody that is out here available and single and you know, looking for new love or waiting on new love and still accepting offers or have offers out here is out here thinking that they got to settle for the fact that they're going to be with somebody that's going to be with somebody. No, nobody needs help being with the person they with. You know, you got some cheaters giving. But if you feel like you're going to settle with something, you know, that's not a good thing at all because then you'll settle for anything. You're just going to let anybody you know, put something on your path or put something in your face and you're going to be okay with it. You're not going to say nothing. you just going to let it let it go. No. So somebody out here is saying, I respect how you don't settle. And you got some people out here that respect it. They pay attention enough to know that. And somebody will rebound out here. Or they looking to make somebody a rebound. So be careful, you know, with this fake love out here, if somebody, you know, really just making, really just looking at you as a rebound or looking for a rebound. And you got bully out here, so somebody out here bullying. I can't stand it. 
And somebody out here saying, I use sex to manipulate you on purpose. So somebody really drink, just thinking they uh sex game is just that. Is that it, it's like that. That they feel like they got to use their sex to manipulate you. And I remember my daddy saying one time. At least I think it's my dad um, saying one time. A woman can cheat on a man and outdo a man when it comes to sex as far as, you know, being with somebody hands down. And I said, why is that? He said, because a man got to get it up first. You know, he got to be in the mood. He got to, you know, lick it. He got to do this. He got to, a woman don't have to get something erect and hard, you know, in order to be able to go another round to do this or do that. You know, and by the time he get aroused and got to get it back up, she done already, you know, went through two or three different people already to that one person that he trying to, you know, get a nut from. So, and then you got people out here that be faking. But somebody is definitely out here manipulating, using sex to manipulate people. And you have to be mindful of folks like this because you do got folks that have a Jezebel or a succubus, um, spirit you know on them attached to them and you do have folks out here that actually do you know have sex with demons you got some look it up a succubus spirit you know a lot of times if you've ever seen um i want to say it's easy by you you know look at that you know check that movie out so you can see what i'm talking about but you do have people out here that's witch doctors dark witches that use sex magic and stuff like that on people and they actually use sex to manipulate you know, folks' way of looking at things or looking at them on purpose. On purpose. Some folks be thinking they actually just turned on by somebody and they like, I ain't know they even like people like this or like that. You know, I ain't know they was in them kind of folks. You got to be mindful of some of the things some of these people actually out here being manipulated doing. And some of them out here using sex to manipulate folks to get what they want, whether it's to pay a bill, whether it's to get something done or get somebody to... uh go in on some type of illegal activity or something, you'd be surprised how people use sex to uh, manipulate folks on purpose into making a decision or helping them out with something or uh, gifting them something, anything. Because folks want to believe that they sex is what got that. You know, my sex that good, he bought me a car. He, my sex that good, it made him do this. They don't want to believe that they can use any other tactic or anything authentic about they self to get something done or that a person did something because of their hard work or they somebody gifted them something because they felt like they you know was a winner in a situation like i felt like rewarding them with this gift or with this offer or whatever the case may be and even in them moments people think you you know you helped your way to the top you know to be where you at because that's something they'll do that's something they feel like what have to be done if you're going to be there. They don't think nobody's looking at you, you know, your authentic self. They don't think somebody see you authentically. They they looking at you on the surface. They're not looking at you as within. And that's sad, you know, because some, that means you need to go within and, and really search yourself. But um, if that card is definitely out here. I use sex to manipulate you on purpose. So... Somebody wants, you know, is out here using sex to manipulate you on purpose. And it may, you know, be something that, you know, anybody from my past may have done. But it's not something that, you know, I was going to settle for either. You know what I'm saying? Because good sex is only, you know, it's between two people. Good sex ain't just one person saying, oh, man, you know, my wood is good. This is no. Your will was only good because what you was in was good. It's, 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 it go both ways. And some folks be out here just in they self, in they just real self-centered. I'm talking about it's all about them. And you can't be with people that's jealous of you, and it could be a lover. You know, they in competition with you with sex. They trying to outdo you in the sex department instead of just enjoying the, authentic, the authenticity of you. And some people don't enjoy that about you until you're gone. Until they out here searching for it and looking for it in something or somebody else. And out here using sex to manipulate you. 
than anybody else on purpose. So don't think, you know, income tax time, six ain't being used to manipulate folks. So don't let it be you. And let's see, the next card out is runner. So you got a runner out here, somebody that's just normally not committal. They just non-committal. They, you know, not open to um commitment. You know, they they just for the streets, they for everybody. Next card out is, I can't say you can't do this or that. Fairness. So somebody is understanding that they can't say that you can't do this or that. You know, they, you know, want to, you know, emulate fairness, you know, in a situation or with you. They want you to know that they, they understand that they can't say you can't do this or that. You know, they understand that that's just being fair. The next card out is let's see. Shuffle. Okay, the next card out is overly indulging. So somebody overly indulging. And that can be in anything. You know, you could be overly indulging in, you know, in drugs and alcohol, um, in porn, in shopping, in eating. Uh, and then you got some people that binge, you know, eat, you know, binge, drink. So whatever it is, it's either you or somebody out here is overly indulging in something. And I'm getting some type of drugs or alcohol. You know, and anything that has anything to do with substance abuse, you know, it can, it affects your way of thinking, your emotions. So whoever it is, they in their emotions, whoever it is, you know, they, they thoughts is driving them to overly indulge. And people like that don't even think that that's what they're doing. Uh, next card out is I look at the world differently because because of you. So if somebody is saying that they look at the world different because of you. And that goes back to what I was saying in the beginning, you know, to have involvement with people where even in business that you can eliminate, you know, you can reflect and you can Put a person, you know, in the mind of uh, different ways to look at something other than just one way, you know, because there's two sides to everything. And uh, I'm not a one-sided person on anything. I try not to be. I really ain't going to say I try. I just, I'm just not. I think it's a lot of ways to look at something being done, the way something could be, how something got that way, um, or what to do about something. It's just, you know, I don't look at something one-sided. So somebody wants you to know I look at the world differently because of you. And uh, the next card out is good karma. So somebody out here getting good, you know, getting good karma. So, you know, they do, do have a victory card out here. So also um, you have a friend in Jesus. So you definitely had it. If there's anything you want to get off your chest or if it's something you feel like you you don't want to have a a heart a heart about Jesus and Mike it, it's the best choice at this point especially when you got people out here lying and gossiping you know you got a friend in Jesus if you want to go to him and talk to him about whatever this is or whatever you feel is going on or whatever you've been playing victim you know in you know it's, it's it, you do have time if you choose to go, you know, toward God, you either go toward Jesus and, you know, right some wrongs and get some things right, genuinely. But first, middle, and last initial H.
next card out is I get readings on you to see if you've moved on. So somebody out here is getting readings. Or maybe this is you getting readings to see if somebody's moved on. Yeah. So somebody out here is, re is uh, getting readings on somebody to see if they moved on or who they moved on with. And you got to be mindful of where you get readings from because sometimes some people are dark entities and they be out here doing readings and they readers and they normally can't channel future stuff and let alone some present um, because of them being dark entities and um, karmic. A lot of times they'll pick up on past life situations um, that you may have been involved in or may have went on with you and you will be thinking that they're talking about something present in the current moment, and it's not. And people will run off and make decisions and, you know, go to, you know, shape-shifting and stuff like that and, and changing up with somebody because of a reader and, and a reading that they got. So you need to be mindful of the people that's doing your reading because getting readings on other people means that person, whoever that practitioner is, they need that person permission. Folks be out here getting readings on folks that don't even, these people don't even ask for permission. And even if I was to, somebody was to come to me and say that they wanted a reading on somebody else, I would not be doing that. That It would be a hard no for me. Um, a hard pass because, for one, you don't have and I don't have that person's permission to be digging into their energy to figure out what it is you want to know about them. If you can't call them and ask them or get on Messenger or Whatever that is on your phone that you bullying, that you use to bully folks or cyber bully or um, whoever it is you sitting out here gossiping and spreading lies with, you might need to just start fact checking and going to the source. And maybe you don't know the source like that and, and that's just more reason for you to just keep that mouth closed. Because uh, going out here getting readings on people is really going to backfire. And some people get readings on folks to, to try to keep their hands clean from being guilty or being getting a tower because on the bottom of the deck is tower so somebody out here you know may have some new beginnings out here in love and may be in their head about some things but they balanced out you know and they got some burdens or some things that's causing delays in this situation or whatever that they in or looking forward to but that's just you know, divine timing, but when you, you know, made that decision and you removed some people, some things, or cut some things out, you know, there is a victory, but then you also got the four cups out here too, so nobody's, you know, taking, somebody's not taking any offers right now, you know, even if they are, you know, expecting new love or in that energy, but there's a tower moment out here. Um, also, so you might want to be mindful of, you know, whatever it is that's causing delays or whatever it is you might be, um, you know, not paying attention to because, you know, it, it could bring a tower. So be mindful of these readings. Somebody is definitely out here getting readings on somebody like I And some of these um, people are actually readers themselves, but they're karmic. And them the type of people that'll do readings on other people anyway. You know, some folks is not going to give you um, a reading on somebody else unless it involves you, you know. Um, you as the main person you know, source, or you asking, like, you know, I want to know if this relationship I'm in with this person, you know, in that way, but if you just out here just trying to get a reading on somebody just to see what they, no, but somebody's out here getting a reading to see if you moved on, or maybe this is you, you know, getting readings on people to see if they moved on, whoever this individual is, 
But um, when the when the tower hits, it's not gonna it's not gonna miss you for one. So you do have some practitioners that you know get hit, you know, with these towers too for you know participating in these readings, you know, on other people that you don't know they ranking, you don't know they ancestry, you don't know none of that stuff. And you go to temper with these folks' energy, trying to be nosy, trying to tap in and, and, and get the work, get your gifts stripped from you, if you got any. If you ever had any. But you'll never know, you know, because once you come up against the right ones, like some chosen ones, it's a wrap. Um, the next card out is repeating what I've overheard, what I overheard and pretending I have psychic gifts. Let me say that again. And then it's falling under fate. <laughs> Repeating what I overheard and pretending I have psychic gifts. So basically, this is somebody that repeated what they heard somebody say. That they had going up some something somebody said that had something to do with something or somebody they know. And they don't know them personally, but they, you know, know of them. But whatever it is, they re heard something about they what that person said. They repeated something that person said. Maybe somebody came to them and told them that this person said this or was saying that. And they went back, This whoever they were telling this to went back and repeated it. And... Whoever they repeated it to made them seem they probably wanted to know, like, how you know that? And it made them look like they were psychic or they wanted to come off to this person like they were a psychic. Instead of just being their authentic, you know, best self, they decided to repeat something they heard somebody say. And whatever they heard this somebody say, they went and said it to whatever this was they heard they went and said it to somebody that they knew it was gonna resonate with or it had something to do with and it they wanted to come off like oh i just had a dream about that or you know i just you know felt that you know or i had got a message or you know i was meditating and it, it came up or you know something like that is what i'm getting but either way it's fake they just fake And trying to block your shine. So somebody out here trying to block your shine and, and getting terrible readings um on you and everything. And then out here trying to act like they psychic too. And then they know this for <laughs> like I just said. Sibling jealousy. Lord, I can um vouch for that. And I don't even believe that's my real sibling. So anyway, um we got some sibling jealousy out here, so Maybe this is you, uh, you know, that has some sibling jealousy that you may resonate with some of this that's being said. And you may be experiencing some sibling jealousy in a situation. Um, you may have a sibling that's trying to block your shine or out here lying and gossiping on you or whatever. I know I have, but listen, life goes on and if they feel like they need to do it, let them do it. I mean... Some folks just got to learn to mind the business that pays them. You know, there's a job for those that people that tell lies. And there's a job for nosy people. It's called detectives. You know, but even detectives be looking for the facts. They be looking for the truth. Or they looking for something, you know, to come out of what they're doing. And they're getting paid for it. So I feel like if you lying and gossiping out here and spending money instead of making money, you're doing, you got the wrong job. But um, somebody got some sibling jealousy out here. And listen not be just to be straight up honest with you that sibling jealousy is real like this person i call my mom she got sibling jealousy for real for real i'm talking about sisters having sex with each other's boyfriend they get back at them then you know um then they end up having kids that's doing it to each other you know so and you got no out here so Whatever this, um, the card it just says no. So whatever the question might be or whatever the concern is that you want to answer on, it's no. 
So that's all I got for you guys for right now. And make good choices, make good decisions, put some thought into what you do from day to day. Do something nice for others, even if you don't know them. Until next time, love you. Bye.